Oh, Handora da Coste Belege Beston Daledeve Nigabando Stobre de Be Entazalimbra Gazuta in de Lebayato Zampra Casiki on da Harima Costalim Galala Bozam Prekis de Rendo Bahaye in Dostoba Hayenda Dima no Costa Icalidi no Subrevene Ketianda la Bahaye Haradu suprande ba kumpra gazete yenda raba yokondo rodoboya. Spirit of the Lord. Ma andizebe nano subragaden da hayendo. Haradu kushta yenda riba hasodom brevenika yando rodobo. Baradu suprande bagaza liamda radabo subrade yente lebeze. Takando robaya. E a undo subregai and dododoma yet in ze no ombre gizanta livesha hayalalondo sobra de bayada da shadayando. Holy Spirit. Le embre gazutai kanda vali shupalalal la banca to zuba aliki yonda zo enda lacunda la bay shata lenda de debo sobre yande. Rabaha, ikalindo robo supra gayen talibrani masanda, Holy Spirit. It's your day. It's your time. It's your season. It is your moment. It is your hour. I open this channel once again to you. Giver of light. Giver of life. I open this channel once again. That you may pour out yourself through this instrument. May your kingdom come. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. Open up channels of the Spirit. Open up gates of the Spirit. Let there be a release. Let there be an outpouring. Let there be a manifestation, a flowing of the heart of God. The eternal river of God. Let there be, yes. A connection this morning. Let there be a pouring. Let there be a flowing. Let the two streams of God. The four streams of God. Converge. We want to see the face of the calf. We want to hear the voice of the lion. We want to know. The part of the eagle. May there be a connection. In the full revelation of all that you have ordained for this season. We take our eyes off the natural. We look again to the eternal things that have been positioned. Waiting for us to connect. Help us, O oh God. Help your church in this hour. To follow the directions and the voice of your spirit. Leading us into that arena where we can come. To the cave where we can hear your voice. As Moses heard your voice. Moses. For the place that you stand is on holy ground. Open our understanding. Awaken us to the awareness of where we stand in this moment in time. May we enter into the confluence that will bring us, Almighty God, to the place where we can indeed connect from other streams. You said to me yesterday, a new channel of the Spirit is open up. And only those who have the ears to hear will open their hearts to allow those channels to flow into them. 
I thank you once again, Father. These are not mere words. Words are the container, they are the vehicle that carries your heart, your desire, your good pleasure. So I pray this morning, oh God, once again, as we allow you to speak to us in a new way, in a fresh way, in a way that will cause us to leap in the spirit. The scripture says that when John heard the voice of Mary, he leaped for joy. He recognized that which Mary carried while he was still in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth. (laughs) Ah, Holy Spirit. Heart to heart. Spirit to spirit. Faith to faith. Take us beyond the veil, O God. Take us beyond the veil. Bring us into this new day of your spirit. You're looking for men and women who are mature. Who are endowed, enriched, emboldened, well established, firmly firmed, firmly built upon the eternal realities of your spirit. Open the eyes of our mind. We have come to the place of the worship. This is the place of the worship. As the man was sent to the place of the worship, as he washed the mud, the flesh out of his eyes, he came back sin. It is my prayer, O oh God, this morning, that we will come back sin, O oh God, that as I bring the people to the place of your demand, Awareness and awakening to the realities of what your spirit is showing, what your spirit is emphasizing, will become more clear to us. Clarity is what I pray for this morning, oh God. This morning we had a powerful time, but the word was distorted. What an example! If the prophet makes a muffled sound. If the trumpet makes a muffled sound. How can the people prepare? You prove to us once again that no matter how powerful the message. No matter how wonderful the message. If it's not clear to the hearers. It profits nothing. And so I deleted it. I discarded it. Because the revelation housed by this muffleness is no good. <laughs> this is not a muffled sound. It's a clarion call. And those who have been trained, who have been built and equipped, who have learned to sit at the table of the spirit and feed on the bread of life himself, will understand the language of the spirit. Yes. He said, the foolish man cannot understand the things of the spirit. Because he's still captured by his carnal mind. He's still being governed and administrated by his fallen Adamic nature. And therefore, he cannot comprehend. And so, he cannot place value on spiritual things. (laughs) I... Deliver me, O God, from carnality. 
Avest me, O God, from the ways of the flesh. Bring me to the height of your heel that I can see the things the holy men saw and they left everything to journey yonder. Except we are captured by heaven's reality, earthly vagaries will continue to keep us bound to this, to this realm that is temporal. Why we look not to the things that are seen? <laughs> For the things that we see are temporal. They are subject to change as greater event comes. The events that are lower are pushed aside. I pray, Lord, this morning that there will be a quest, a hunger, a thirst, a longing, a yearning, a desire, a burden in the heart of everyone watching listening to go beyond the outer man to go beyond the rudiments and the traditions of men to crave for something beyond what the eyes can see what the ears can hear it is my prayer oh god that the deep lord will call to the deep like the noise of many waters ah my soul thirst and yearn for you there is a panting in me, O oh God, to want to be filled by you. I want to be full of you, O oh God. Break the seal. Break the seal. Break the seal. Take me beyond the realm of material satisfaction. Bring me to the place where holy men journeyed. Natural men. He said Elijah was a man like us. But he saw something. He heard something that caused him to log onto eternal realities. That the power and the forces that be in his day could not stop him. There is a realm beyond what we see. Friends, that is the invitation I'm giving to you this day. There is more to what you see. There is more to what you have come to believe and accept. There is more... <laughs> To what men have defined for you and to you. There's a call to go beyond, to go outside the camp. Oh God. There is a call to go and meet him outside the camp, outside our flesh, outside our ways. There is a call. Can you hear the sound? Can you hear the voice? Not a muffling one. If the sound is still muffled, you've got to discard it. Like I discarded this morning's broadcast. I discarded it. I just deleted it. YouTube said, do you want to delete this thing forever? I said, yes. As powerful as the message. But it makes no good if it cannot be understood. There are things you've got to learn to discard, my friends. There are things that sound wonderful, spiritual. May even sound profitable. But they are muffled. They are unclear. They are not distinct. They are confusing to you. You are not sure of them. You are uncertain about them. You can build on them, friends. You've got to learn to count the cost. Of the lost. 
I felt so bad this morning. And the Lord said, don't feel bad, my son. I've just shown you. I've just given you a practical reality to what I'm asking you to teach. If the sound is muffled, if the voice is not clear, if the voice of the Lord cannot be clear to you, it's not clear to you. If the things of God is still, well, well, I'm not sure, maybe in case, suppose, <laughs> if there are still probability to the things you claim in the thing, are the things of the Spirit, then it's not God. My sheep, they hear my voice, a stranger's voice, they will not follow. We have imbibed, we have accepted, we have fed on the voice of strangers. Therefore, we have become strangers even to the things of the Spirit of God. Come on. I said to the Father, I'm going to re-preach what I preached this morning. He said, go ahead. I'm with you. I will, even, I will even emphasize the things that you did not emphasize in the morning. You see, I'm grateful. This is the path that I have chosen. This is the way that I have chosen. I live for this. And if need be, I die in this. I want to die in this. Nothing else satisfies. The studio I'm seeking to build is basically to facilitate the advancement the counsels of God in reaching the nations I seek no glory of myself I seek nothing for myself he knows, he knows my heart I'm not saying it to to, to sweet talk or to make no, no, I'm telling you, he knows I am dead to the things of this world Every day I am praying, God. I want to understand your vision for me. The position you want me, the role you desire me to play in the life of my son Zadok that is yet unborn. You found it worthy for me to shape the life and the destiny of this voice that you are sending to my generation. I want to know. It's a responsibility to be a father. To one carrying destiny. To one sent with a mandate. I cannot afford to assume, to presume the destiny of three children committed into my hands. I cannot afford to miss it. I cannot. And so I understand that I have to engage the spirits. I have to, I have to develop an inquiring spirit. Do you have an inquiring spirit? You, you easily give up and give in to little things, to things that are not clear. And so halfway in the journey, you're confused. You don't know what to do. Because you did not wait on the Lord. Hi. You see, it's about an attitude, friends. It's about a commitment. No matter how full you were yesterday, you must come with an emptiness as it's called today. <laughs> if it's today, you empty yourself. You make room. For heaven to breathe on you again. To fill you. You see. This is the secret. This is the secret. Of walking. With the spirit of God. You cannot be satisfied. With an event. You see, what I'm doing right now is an event. When I am done, the real work starts. And the things that you have heard, the things that has been proclaimed, 
you put it to work. Christianity is not what we display before men. It is the life we live in privacy. It is the life we live in privacy. Our private life is what defines our position before men. I pray this morning that you will hear the sound of the Spirit. You will hear the bell of the Spirit. You will hear the trumpet of the Spirit. Uh, that there will be an awakening in you that longs for God. As you long for Him, you will seek God to grant you mobility. To journey. Abraham, leave your father's house <laughs> to a land I will show you. There is a land where things are different from how we were born. There is a land heaven is bringing us into that is estranged to the environment that has shaped us. God will use Abraham, but He won't use him. From how the father has defined that environment for Abraham. You've got to leave. That's the call. That's the mandate. That's the message I bring to you. Leaving the old ways. Leaving the old man behind. Leaving the traditions of man. Shifting in an environment. Coming into a higher dimension. The ascended life of those apprehended to come to the heel of the Lord. Whatever God is going to use you to do down here on earth, he has to first of all bring you out of it, out of the earth. We talked about that this morning. It wasn't clear, but hear it again. Ezekiel 22 30. God said, I sought for a man, a man. There is a generation God is looking for that are men. Manhood is the need for the hour. A man who is a priest, not just to his home, but to his environment, to his society. You see, a true man will say, If I be the man of God, Manhood is the womb that births the sound of the prophets. God is calling us. We have to exit. We have to exodus. We have to live. We have to detach ourselves. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the, the, the calling to, to develop your spirit man. There is a world waiting for you in the spirit reality that you are not familiar with. There is a place in the spirit we are called to, to know, to understand. We cannot be estranged to the ways of the spirit. We are not allowed to be estranged. We are not strangers. We ought not to be strangers to the things of the Spirit. You see, when you become a man or a woman of the Spirit, you will understand a lot of things that you have not been taught. <laughs> you will understand so many things that you have not been taught. Many 95% of the things that I know today, I was not taught by men. I didn't learn them in some corridor of school. I didn't learn them in my Bible school. I didn't have, you know, the luxury of a father or mother to teach me those things. Yes, God placed certain people around my life at some intervals. But many of the things that I learned today that I know, that I've come to understand... I discover them by searching the word of God. I was hungry. I wanted to find out what this book 
this word of God has in stock for me. I was searching like one who has lost a treasure. And as they saw that this guy would not give up, as they saw my quest, my yearning, my, my passion, I wasn't trying to know so that I can preach. No, I wanted to discover who I am in him. I wanted to find out my place, my purpose on earth. I wanted to know about my inheritance. I came out from a group that told me that all my inheritance are material things, are cars. That if I must have faith, I must have the faith to claim a car, to buy something, to become something. But I knew that there is more to life than all of these material things they said my faith must be used for. And so I began to search. And one day I discovered in the word of God that faith is not for possessing things. Faith was designed to apprehend God. I discovered that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. By it the elders they obtain good report. I said, God, how come they told me that faith is to obtain material things? Then I saw they that must come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I said, Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Redirect me. Redirect me. And he showed me how to take a U-turn. My life changed. Unfortunately, it's not just on the issues of faith alone that we have been mis misdirected. That we have been taught wrongly. Our orientation about God, about our life, about life, about home, about family, about marriage, about money, about our children, about, you know, our nation. Our orientation is totally wrong. You know, so many things that we have come to imbibe and accept as the truth are false, are lies. So many are trying to please God on the, on the foundation of lie. Many are trying to, you know, understand God with the wrong foundation, with the wrong belief system. When we say kingdom, we have a different idea of what the kingdom is. In fact, we have created a kingdom that sounds godly, heavenly, but uh, the value is totally different from the kingdom of God. Everybody today talks kingdom, but they're building their own kingdom. They're building their own kingdom. Who is going to build the kingdom of God? We have mastered the act of using God's word to build things for ourselves. The gift God gave to us to equip the saints, to build the church, we've used it to build empires for ourselves. These are the burdens of my own heart. These are the things that bothers my heart. And so I'm calling you to please join me on this path of rediscovering. We have this residual knowledge that, there's, that there are two trees in the garden outside the, of the other trees. We preach. We must be partakers of the tree of life. But our actions is eating, ever eating from the tree of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see. We are forever drawing near with our mouth but our heart 
is forever severing itself from the things of God, from the ways of God. These things bother me, friends. The scriptures say, ever learning, but are not able to come. How can we be ever learning, but we are not coming to the knowledge of truth? But we are learning. How? Because our values are wrong. Our projections, our objectives are wrong. We have a false agenda. Even when we talk about the things of the spirit, the focus is how to benefit ourselves, how to build something for ourselves. We use the things of God, the things of the spirit, to create a false sense of entitlement for ourselves. Something is wrong with our configuration. Something is wrong with our orientation. You see, these are the burdens of my own heart. As we look into the issues of building our spirit man, God demands. That's why he gave us the fivefold ministry. You see, all this class of grace we're given, the Bible says, for the perfection, for the perfecting of the saints, so that the saints can grow up and do the work of their ministry. The work of a one called into the fivefold ministry is to build up, is to train, is to equip, is to energize, is to infuse the gift of God, the grace of God into the life of those who have come. You see, I had the man of God made a statement while I was listening to one of his audio books. This man lived in the 1800s. He was preaching to, he was, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that's what he was preaching to somebody who, who is seeking the Lord. And he said, when somebody is searching for God, never assume, never assume that they are saved because you told them, repeat this word after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. And they say those words. And then when they finish in those, you know, three, five, you know, sentences or whatever. And then you say, now you're, you're born again. That's a lie. There's nothing like that in the scripture. It says, you must let the spirit of God convince that person by himself. He himself will know if he's saved. If he's saved, he will search. He will come. I've given my heart to the Lord. Something happened in my life. Everybody knows the day the Lord comes into their life. But how do we do it today? Even if those people are not ready, they're still searching, they're still seeking. They come to church. They hear a sermon that moves them. And on the duress, we invite them to the altar. Say this word after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my life. Forgive me my sin, forgive me my sin. I am saved, I am saved. Suddenly we tell them they are saved. Only to count numbers. And those people go back and they discover that they are not saved because the craving, the desire, the passion for the ways of the world is still in them. Many are not saved until they begin to sit in that. I know a lot of people that came to Bible school that were not born again. But in the course of them hearing God's word, in the course of them amen, being taught God's word, they confess. They give their life to Christ. How does somebody come to a Bible school without salvation? Because we assume. You see, that's the point that I'm making. 
Maybe you are listening to me and you, one of those people, you, you thought you were saved. Because one of the things, because I've always said to myself, how can we claim to be saved? But yet, the ways of the world, the passions of the flesh outweigh our desire for God. How? Is it that God is a liar or we have been led astray? We've been lied to. Of course, Betty has been lied to. People claim they are saved, but they hate the truth. They hate the, they, some people disdain you. As I'm speaking right now, some people are, are just in and out. Just what is that babbler talking about? What's that guy talking about? They hate it when you stand for the truth. When you say to them, the sin nature has no place in the things of God. They think I dropped from heaven to say this thing. I was once a sinner. I lived in sin. I drank sin. I ate sin. Everything you can think of that is sinful from the fallen human nature, I reflected that. Until, until, I said, until I was determined that I don't want those things again. You see, it's not enough to say I've given my life to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus. I was still a sinner. I was still deep in sin and in iniquity. But I began to develop a hate for sin. I began to develop. I, and in fact, I didn't, des I didn't begin to develop. I prayed those desires to my life. Lord, give me the desire to hate sin. I read in the scripture. David said, do I not hate them who hate you? Don't I hate them with a passion? I said to God, I want you to plant me with the same desire that you place in David. I want to hate the things that you hate and I want to love the things that you love. I didn't wake up one morning suddenly become <laughs> whoever you think I am. No. You see, if the desire is not there, if the hunger and passion to severe yourself from the things of the flesh, heaven will not help you. Because the desire is there. The will is there. Have you noticed that the Lord amen, did not intervene? When, 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 when Eve was having the conversation with Satan in the garden, the Lord did not say, oh, no, Eve, don't do that. No, he's giving you free will. Is giving you until you learn to take your free will and lay it on the altar. Until you learn to take your desire and place it on the altar. And guess what? You can go back tomorrow and pick it up. <laughs> you can go back the next day and still and say, well, yesterday I laid my will. Today I don't want to lay it. Can I have it back? God will say, go ahead. You have to learn to, to lay down your will and learn to daily leave it on the altar. The ways of the spirit requires your will to agree. Requires that you will to will your will away. You will to will your will away. Daily. 20 years Paul was dying. 20 years every day he was dying. 20 years. It took 20 years for him to die. Say, I died daily. After 20 years, he said, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. I don't know how long it's going to take you. <laughs> I know, I know in, in me, it took more than 20 years plus, and I'm still dying. <laughs> I'm still dying daily. I'm still dying, because you don't know what is alive in you until certain pressure 
until certain needs, until certain people, until certain events and circumstances showed up in your life, you don't know what you need to die to. That's why the work of the Spirit and the life of the Spirit is the most relevant assignment. It's more important than any new discovery. It's more important than any new, any new invention. Hey, to live via the Spirit and to find people that can teach you and help you grow via the Spirit is more important than anything in life. Is the only thing that allow you to move from a life heading to eternal destruction towards the path of eternal life. Think of how important a true vessel, a true servant of God is. Imagine today that true men of God are removed from the earth. Just imagine the evil, the cascade of destruction that is going to be taking place on earth. As this work may seem irrelevant, unappealing to many, in our struggle, in my need, we do this thing with joy, with joy. Because daily I ask the Lord to grant me strength and grace. Think about it. You don't know what you are doing. <clears throat> Every time you raise your, your hands and your voice to heaven. The Bible says, On that day in the battle of the Al Amalekite, as the hands of Moses were raised up to heaven. There was victory. Joshua the warrior. Joshua the military, the military warrior. The, the, mighty, the mighty warrior. With his skill. Was able to win. But as the hand of Moses get heavy and begins to drop. The scripture said Joshua began to lose the battle. You cannot separate. You cannot divorce the spiritual out of the human life. That's why people are looking for all kinds of alternatives to the, to the right way, to the right pattern. They will do all kinds of things, like I said this morning. Even in church today, we have exchanged the ways of the spirit for entertainment. Because we say we want to win the world. You cannot win the world by dropping the standard God gave you to change the world. I discovered that as a pastor. And as I continually raise the standard and the bar of heaven. I began to watch the people that we used to celebrate and honor and say, wow, we've got people. They began to live one by one. They left because the standard of God was raised. They left because we, we said, let us go on. Let us go outside the camp. Let's go to Mount Zion. Let's come to the hill of the Lord. You see, they don't want to climb the hill. They want you to live in the realm of the plain. In fact, they want to stay in the valley. They may come. It's allowed that they come and meet us in the, in the cave at Dulam. But we don't stay in the cave at Dulam. We must take them from Adula to Ziglag. From Ziglag, we must go on to the hill of the Lord. To the mountain of the Lord. We must head to Hebron. We must take possession of a city called Jerusalem. The people don't want that. 
But what do you do? Do you listen to the people? Or you follow the directions of the spirit? Where we are today, as the body of Christ, globally, nationally, as family, as individual, was based on our compromise to the values and the standard of God. Think about that. The reason why, amen, the world today, the reason why, you know, I was watching one of the men of God on Facebook speaking on behalf of the church. They are tired of the government. The government doesn't listen to them. The government wants to keep them locked down. The government have no respect for the church. I say, yes. Who is to be blamed? Do you blame the government for that? No, you don't blame the government. You blame the church because the church compromise the soul they are bad right. Many of these people complaining today, many of them are sought audience. They are sought money. Particularly here in South Africa, many of these big churches were bankrolled by the government. Now, the government don't listen to them. Now they're complaining. No. You have to win back the pride of God and the glory of God for the government to respect you. Elisha knew who he was, what he represents. There's a way that you deal with, amen, evil governments. You bring them to Mount Carmel. And God help you if you do not have God on your side to bring down the fire. God help you if you don't have God on your side to challenge the Jezebel in town. I, I watched the, and the caption and I just shook my head and said, you're so far away from the truth. You wanted a big, you wanted, you wanted a big auditorium, you got it. You wanted the people at all costs. You've got masses in your church. But the government says, the people belong to us. We are the custodian. We watch over the people, not you. <laughs> now they're crying. Rather than complaining, why don't you go lock yourself in with somebody like they did in the upper room? That when you are arrested, you can pray and the place shakes. The government themselves will bow their knees because you show them who you represent. You can be eloquent, you can speak, you can make noise. Government don't listen to all of that. Is there a man of God in town? If I be the man of God, Elijah said. This is where the Lord is calling us back to. This is where the Lord is calling the church to. Are you a man of God? Or you're just a puppet? Of the people. Are you a person of prayer? See I, I've always said it. What makes a man of God. Is not the number of people you gather. Anybody can do anything to gather people. Does heaven know you? Does heaven recognize you? Do you have a place? Do you have a standing? Do you have a voice that when you speak principalities and power, they go into hiding? Oh, Jesus. You see, we have lost our edge. We've lost our edge. We have lost our axe head. Alas, master, it is borrowed. I'm talking about an awakening spirit man. In a day where we are designed to rise and face the powers that be. You have to once again engage God. You cannot do that by assumption. Those who know their God will be strong in him. Then they can do exploit. Exploit is not that you bought a jet. Exploit is not the fact that you, 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 you build God knows what. No, 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 no. That's no exploit. 
The exploit of the kingdom cannot be duplicated by the systems of the world. You see, look at what it took for Pharaoh to let the people of God go. God brought, amen, the engagement to the tenth order. While Pharaoh was seeking to duplicate everything, Moses was, okay, okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> At the last night, God took the firstborn of Pharaoh, took the firstborn of every Egyptian. <laughs> ah, Zaikandobara. There is one that is called the giver of life and there is one that can take it. I want to invite you to a new day. To a day of encounter. A day of encounter. Encounter of the spirit. How far do you want to go? How far do you want to go? God said, I sought for a man that will build up the wall. He's still in search. Would you be that man? That man is not a position of masculinity, of femininity. That man is a position and a condition of a spiritual being. Kando Bayadaba. In the beginning, he made them. He called them Adam. Rise up, man of the spirit. The order of the first day has passed. The day of the man of the flesh is over. If you invest into your earthly carnal life, what you're going to get is carnality. Those who invest to the flesh will get the flesh. But those who invest into the dimension of the spirit will gain life and peace. Eternal life is what the father is calling us to. I'm not looking for what you can display in your flesh. I'm looking for what you can carry until you, you grow in that reality. When the Lord sees fit and says, now you're ready to send you out. Call unto him, friends. Cry out to him. I want more of you, Father. You see, when your prayer no longer makes sense to your mind, then you're praying. That's how I pray. Oh God, I long for you. I yearn for you. My soul cry out and thirst for the living God. In a land where there is no water, I'm in need of you. Pour yourself into me. They said there stood six, six gallons, six, six uh, uh, empty vessels. Each of them can carry, can hold between 30 to 20 gallons of water. They've been there. They say, go fill them with water. After they've been filled to the brim, then fetch, take it. To the master of ceremony. Oh, Spirit of God. There's a cry. There's a longing in me, oh God. There's a yearning, there's a thirst, oh God. In the day where men are dropping the ball, in the day where it's okay to live in the average, in the day where nobody cares and bother about the path that leads to Zion. Oh, Subra Gayan Talababo. I cry out, Father, for you. 
I hunger for you. I thirst. I long for you. Use me, Lord. I surrender myself. I yield myself to you. All of me. All of me. What I, what I have, what I represent, oh God. My home, my family, my children. I lay them down on the altar. Come. Take your place. Have your way. Sando Robo Kayando. Ombre Gizeberiado. Labre Gizem Tololoba Shanda Yadabo. Rabba Kushti Endale Lukumba Hai Subrade. And the child grew in the spirit. Wax strong in the spirit and was in the wilderness until the day of his appearance. There's a day of appearance, friends. But before that day emerges, you have to yield yourself to every training, to every training, to every perf perfection that is required. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to Jesus. Oh, what a staring, friends. What a staring. You see, when you do what is required to be done, <clears throat> when you do what the Spirit of God requires you to do, they will reward you with what is required, with what you, with what you need to represent heaven. When you, when you surrender, when you follow. You see, Abraham did not know what was happening on the other side of the journey to the mountain of Horeb. He was living in obedience to what the Lord said. Take your son, your only son, <laughs> to Horeb. In one of the mountains, there you sacrifice him. All right. Obedience. But on the other hand, the Lord was making a preparation for an alternative. He didn't see that. He didn't need to see that. He didn't need to understand that. He just needed to walk in obedience. If you believe that God is wiser than all the wisdom of men, that all the foolishness of men, if you believe that the wisdom of God, hallelujah, is greater than anything you can ever believe or have, then you will listen and obey. You see, but for you to be able to walk in that obedience, you must know how to hear God. That's why you see the importance of what we're talking about is very critical that you know how to grow in the spirit so that when God speaks, you're quick to obey, you're quick to respond, you're quick to listen, you're not confused. You know that God spoke. Abraham knew that God spoke, regardless of what the wife may think, he knew God said, This boy. Man Moriah. He knew. You see, if there's anything we should learn from Abraham, not just about his faith, no, but about his ability to hear God and to see the things of God. The scripture says he was sitting outside his tent. Amen. And the triumph God did as if they were going to Sodom, on their way to Sodom. And they passed in front. And he. he, he he will lay them. He say, no, no. You're not going to pass by my house like that. No. Please, could you come in? Have some water. Can I wash your feet, guys? Can I give you something to eat before you continue on your journey? What a man of the spirit. And somebody will say, well, we're no longer in the days of the Old Testament. Somebody lied to you. The word of God is God's breath. From beginning to the end, the word is relevant. From Genesis to Revelation is about the story, hallelujah, about God's dealing with his people. Embrace God's word. When you embrace his word, he will explain his intention to you. He will reveal his heart to you. He will tell you what he means. 
He will tell you what he meant. He will show you what he is saying. Amen. In his word, in his will, in his counsel. His word is his will. You want to walk, amen, in the power of covenant. You've got to know the will. Got to know the will. Don't let no one fool you. Discard the wrong teaching. Purge yourself from the old meal. Move away from the stale bread. It's time to eat from the bread that the light of God, the, the fire of God, the light of God shines upon. The candle light of God shines upon. We are moving out of the outer, of the outer man, of the outer life. We are going beyond the second day. We are pressing into the heart of the Father. The holies of holy. We're going beyond the veil. The minds of men will never, will never fold his hands and watch us go. He will fight. But we must be ready also with the sword of the spirit. That's why John had to be beheaded. Your suke, your mind must, must clear out of the way. There must be a going in without any interference. Christ is the head of his church. Christ is the head of his church. But the head of men will have to be removed. The wisdom of men will have to give way for Christ to sit as the head. Do you hear his voice? Do you hear the sound of his spirit calling you? Come up higher. And let me show you. There's a new reality. Open up to us. Come. Hallelujah. Friends, I'm going to stop here. I believe the spirit of the Lord has really ministered to us in a beautiful, wonderful way. In a special way. The mind of God is opening us up to new things, to new things. And I pray, I pray that you will respond accordingly. I pray that you will not fight, you will not seek to wrestle. You can't out wrestle God. Ask Jacob. Ask Jacob. Ask Jacob. When they finally opened his eyes after he gave up, he saw that that place is the gate of heaven. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He saw it. He said, and I did not know it. I am located at the very spot of the gate of heaven and I did not know it. I didn't know it. How could he have known? How could he have known when all his life he has been taught to engage from his own idea. He's been taught to engage from, he, from his own mentality. From the fallen human wisdom. He's, he's been living, he's been eating from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That thing will never help you to see. It could not see. When they remove the veil, he said, ah, this is the gate of heaven. Hallelujah. This is the gate of heaven. This is the gate of heaven. He climbed the ladder. He saw angel ascending and descending. May the Lord open our eyes of understanding. 
This is my mandate, friends. This is the heart of my prophetic mandate to this nation, to this continent, to my generation. That we will be taken away in the spirit to the place, to the point where we can see things in the true light. Where we can understand people in their true nature. Jesus knew the heart of man. He did not commit himself. Yet he came to die for man. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, friends. I hope I've been able to minister to you this morning. Or afternoon. It's afternoon. I hope the Spirit of God has imparted something deep within your innermost being. Not by might, not by power. Die to your own ways and strength. Give up fighting by might and power. Fall on the sword of the Spirit. So you can live again in the eternal reality of heaven's voice. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Spirit of the Lord. Let him renew your strength. Let him renew your strength. Let him breathe on you and and you. Let him him strengthen you right now. Let him empower you. Just surrender to him. Just yield yourself. Yield your mind. Yield your thoughts. Those things you have imbibed. Those presumptions. Regarding the ways of God, discard them and let the Spirit of God begin to teach you new things, fresh things. Come like like a child, except you become like a child. You see, a child needs one that. He or she can trust to guide. You see? That's one thing about a child. A child depends on the guidance of someone who knows better. The child does not have you know, an ability of his own or herself. That's why God is placing Keep men and women, key leaders around us as we yield and surrender in childlike faith. God is sending people that can parent us spiritually, that can build us, that can equip us. And all we need to do is to trust. Is to trust. That's something we said this morning. You have to learn to trust. You cannot despise the grace, the gift, the anointing of one heaven as place around you, over you, to support you, to encourage you, and think you're going to benefit. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You can't take from here and take from there, take from there, and say you want to mix them together and become something. It's not going to happen. That's not the way of the Spirit. It's not the way of the spirit. We cannot benefit from what we despise. We cannot enjoy from what we hate. We have to learn. We have to obey. We have to follow. We have to learn to be still and know that he is God in our life. And through our lives. Father we thank you. Your ways indeed are not our ways. 
thank you for the impartation. You know that the things that I've said, I haven't said them with some agenda. No. I am just your voice, your instrument. I am basically but a courier. I have delivered your heart, your mind. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Those who will be listening to this broadcast later, let this word steer their hearts in the direction of obedience. Let this word energize them. Let this word awaken them. Let the sound of the trumpet of this word lead them further to the place of your good pleasure. I thank you. I honor your name, O oh God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow. What a release. What an impartation. What a breeding of the very life of God this afternoon again. I want to thank everyone that have joined us. Thank you, Sister Diony. I just saw your name there. Thank you, everyone that have joined us this uh, uh, afternoon. The things that we have been talking about are very essential and critical to our spiritual development. As you can see, the Lord took over and led us in the direction that he wants. And I thank God for that. I bless God for his truth that has gone forth. May that truth continue to challenge us until we imbibe everything that God has ordained for us as we move on. Thank you. Please continue to pray for us. Continue to support us in prayer. Continue to pray for our project. Believing God that we'll be able to finish building this studio for the glory of God to the glory of God. He who has begun a good work is able to finish it. Thank you everyone. Have yourself a blessed week, weekend. Hopefully if the Lord grants me the grace, the leading again to show up this afternoon, again all this today, I will do that. Amen. Remember we only do as the Spirit leads us. And uh, hopefully tomorrow again we will meet. But we are tracking, we are following the foot footsteps the footprint of the lord we are still on act chapter 8 yes i know that and there are still other things that we need to look at like i said there are various emphases of the spirit we just want to follow as the spirit of god leads and guide us this uh, uh, month i said we are going to continue on our teaching ministry relationship and marriage and i promise that we will be looking into three categories this uh, uh, month. We're going to be looking at uh, uh, money, uh, 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 sex, and uh, communication. Those are the three things that I said we're going to be looking into, money, sex, and communication. These three things are very vital and critical all right, to developing the kind of uh, uh, spiritual uh, uh, understanding that allow us to continually invest in a relationship that glorifies God. So we want to look at those three things. I see that uh, uh, those are areas that some people are not aware of. They are not conversant with. What is God saying? All right? Of course, there are many things that have been written along this uh, 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 line, but we want to find out what God says. That's the heart of what we are doing. All right? While we study and learn about what other people are saying regarding a particular topic, but we want to find out as we zero our hearts into God's word and find the right amen, interpretation to those things because it's not enough just to know what God says. We also need to have the right spirit to be able to precisely interpret. Amen. So I'm not sure how we're going to do that amen, uh, uh, this month, but um, that's part of what we want to look at. All right. So please continue to pray for me. I need all the grace, the strength, and of course, the leading of the Spirit to be able to 
bring these teachings across. Why? Because we want to train, we want to equip, we want to prepare amen, a generation that is informed, that is transformed, that is well positioned, that is not amen, confused, that is not amen, uh, uh, um, you know, lied to, that is not building on falsehood. That is what, amen, we want to do. And thank God that our ministry, amen, is strongly built on the revelation of God's word. We believe so much in the revelation of God's word and we'll continue to do that, amen, as the spirit of the Lord grant us grace. So thank you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.